It's another edition of Kaleidoscope on Channels Television. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Anne Mwawadu. Today on the program, we have a chat with the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Daily Need Group, Mr. Tosin Jolayemi, to discuss the organization's progress since inception. Once again, welcome to Kaleidoscope. Let's begin with a short history about the Daily Need Group, which is one of the leading pharmaceutical and essential manufacturing companies right here in Nigeria, producing top daily brands in the country. It all started as Daily Need Chemist through the dream of one man, Otsumba Dr. Matthew Oyijolayemi OFR in 1970 in Lagos Island, Southwest Nigeria. After two years of trading, manufacturing of cosmetics started in Suruleri, also in Lagos, and the first product, Paulina Beauty Cream, was manufactured on the 19th of November 1972, while pharmaceuticals were added the following year. The journey into pharmaceuticals began with the production of the penicillin ointment. The establishment of the company was premised on the need to impact positively on the society through the manufacturing and marketing of essential daily pharmaceutical and household products required to sustain a healthy and vibrant society. In 1974, the organization made a giant stride by moving into its factory which it still occupies till date. The Daily Need Group then added the manufacturing of other personal care products currently extending its product category to more than 20. Over the years, the Daily Need Group has been able to reposition itself as a market-driven organization that is sensitive to the yearnings of the ordinary man, successfully building a strong foundation for future growth and being a major player in the Nigerian economy for decades. From a small enterprise in 1970, the Daily Need Group has grown into a large-scale company, ranking among the top pharmaceutical names in Africa. With a vision to be ranked among the League of World Class Pharmaceutical Companies through the production of premium brands and a manufacturing process that satisfies global best practices, the Daily Need Group is determined to continue to create a great future for itself and its customers. Now let's find out more from the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of the Daily Need Group, Mr. Tosin Jolayemi, as we discuss the organization's journey so far. The vision of your organization is to be a world-class manufacturing company producing premium daily need brands. Is the daily need group living its dream as we speak, remembering that you just celebrated your 50th anniversary recently? We could easily say yes, we are living the dream because the vision is to create premium brands and international standard is part of the vision. And from all that we've done so far, I think we're living our dream. In the, in the past 50 years, what we've done is that we have decided to use all the resources that we have available to us, which, which means the human capital resources that is available in the market, the financial resources that is available in the banks for industries, the, all the resources that you could ever think of for a manufacturing act outfit to use. What we have done is, because we have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly of the Nigerian economy, we have been able to look at the economy to see where it will fit us to be able to play. And in the last 50 years, we have actually focused on what will be of benefit to the populace, because we are actually market-driven. And in that case, we look for spaces where others don't thrive, or where other, others, others don't play. Now, you talked about the economy of Nigeria, so we definitely know there are so many challenges, especially in the manufacturing sector. How have you also been able to manage the various challenges since you started this business? Interesting. Um, the economic sector, as regards manufacturing, is um, very interesting. Different aspects of this economy. Um, we can look at power as a generation of electricity, we can look at the, at the human capital, um, the forex regime. We can look at a lot, but let me start from power. In, in the power sector, it, it's, it's no news to say that power is a big challenge to the industry. 
And um, at a point in time in dealing it, we realized that we could not go on with the national grid. So what we did was to, to get ourselves off the national grid, to find an alternative source of energy to the national grid. Because during the time we were on the national grid, we could have an outage four times in a day. And for every four times, for every time the national grid takes power, before we switch to alternative power, we lose 30 minutes on some machineries. That means if four times a day, we lose two hours each day. So what we did was to look for an alternative, and we went gas um, some years ago. And it has cut our power um, costs by a third, which has been very positive to our bottom line. The second thing is the issue that I mentioned, the sourcing of forex. The sourcing of forex have always been a problem to manufacturing industry because, because we don't have petrochemical industries. We don't have enough cottage industries in Nigeria to produce the things like cap caps, um, the packaging caps, the packaging products. But since we don't have a good cottage industry, we're restricted to what we have. And we're restricted to doing things the normal way in the manufacturing industry. Secondly, like I said, the issue of petrochemical industry. The petrochemical industry is what we need to develop our active pharmaceutical raw materials or even the excipients. But as long as we don't have an active pharmaceutical raw material manufacturer, which is as a result of not having a petrochemical industry, we have to be dependent on imports. And when we're dependent on imports on all our raw materials, then we have to source for funds. We have to source for forex and the government is not particularly focused on manufacturing. They have never been. I'm not sure they still have. So the issue is, except government is deliberate. Now, if we continue to focus on imports, that means we continue to generate employment for other people in other countries, while we deny our own citizenry of employment. Part of the problem we have is the societal problems. Uh, societal problem in the sense that we have a perception that imported goods are better than local goods, which, which is in real sense is not. Because for the pharmaceutical industry, we were regulated. We're regulated by NAVDAC. We're regulated, we're strictly regulated by PS, PCN, NAVDAC. We're regulated by Ministry of Health. We're regulated by, in fact, it's, it's more like a double jeopardy issue. So if the regulation that comes from the local industry, which is not there, for the foreign companies that are bringing or shipping things here. A lot of people can go to India or go to China and bring, and bring products. How many times have they been vetted? How many times have Nigerian government officials gone to inspect, to vet consistently the way we're being vetted? The quality of the product that we produce is being scrutinized by NAVDAC and all regulative agencies, even SON, which means that we are bound to give quality products. But if we're competing with other products that are free to come into the economic space that we operate without having those stringent um, regulations, and the perception of the locals in the nation believe that if it is made in X, it's better than made in Nigeria, then we are fighting against unseen. So those are the problems we have in Nigeria. Now, if you have those psychological problems, or we can call it hereditary problems, that is consistent in our, in our society, then we don't have a petrochemical industry. So we have to import. We have to use our hard-hand foreign exchange to bring in this raw material before we do a conversion, before we now do packaging and send it to the market. While an importer just brings it in, gets a warehouse, stores in the warehouse, and pushes it into the market. Then we start competing on the same trail. Now, there's a duty regime. We pay duty on everything that we bring in. The importers pay duty only on the product it brings. I will pay duty on if, I, if we're using 18 different active interest ingredients, we pay different duties on them. Some attract 5%, some attract 10%, depending on, on what the government puts or the HS code puts the duty regime on. So for being a manufacturer, I say to people, you have to be in national duty. You are in national duty. You must love the nation for you to be a manufacturer. The passion for Nigeria must go beyond just making money. It must go beyond just wanting to do something. 
It must be you want to impact your society. You just want to touch the, 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 the society. You want to create jobs. You want to have a meaningful impact in the society. And that's what we do here. So talking about the impact now, since you mentioned it, you have, um, or in your mission, you added impacting the health sector in Nigeria. Can you measure how much impact you have already made in that sector so far? Well, first of all, the products that we focus on um, were the first company in this country to produce penicillin, tab um, penicillin ointments. And I could safely tell you truly that we're the first company in this country to produce penicillin tablets. We're also the first company in this country to produce amoxicillin dispersible tablets. We're also the first company in this country to produce suppositories, either the hemorrhoid suppositories or the parastamol suppositories. So we have a lot of firsts on our staple. Why we do those ones is they are medicaments that are not particularly complex. But they're not available in the, in, in the economy, in the system. And we, sh we don't see any reason why we should be importing simple formulations. And those simple formulations are easy use, even though they might be prescriptives. But we just seem to have them there. So we don't just seem to have them. And that's why we felt, OK, we need to do this. So from our product, our product is market focused. So the only way to impact it is to produce products that the market needs and requires. Now, secondly, is that having done what we've done so far, in the last 50 years, a uh, few years ago, about 12 years ago, we had to donate things to Luth Equipment. And um, we, in the last few months, we have gone to affect the Mushi, the Mushi local government to to celebrate with them on our 50th, to do medical outreach. We got doctors, dentists, um, all professionals to test the people. And they also, in, the, in the local government, it was open. We collaborated with the local government chairman. Um, we've donated to Lutz in the past. We've donated medicines to Lutz in the past. We've done it, and in the last few months, we, last few weeks, we donated uniforms. Um, to Lasso two, we've donated medicines in the past. In the last few months, we donated um, equipment for the training of the nurses. And we do that regularly, depending. We even do for private hospitals. We donate medicines for private hospitals. But Daily Need has always been a company that is always, when publicity, uh, we're not publicity, we're publicity averse. So we just do our things to affect our population, to affect our society quietly. And we just do our things. Then. In the aspect of schools, we, we do career days. We allow schools to come to our facility. We educate them. We speak to them. What we're trying to do is to try and build a next generation of Nigeria that could dream big, that could begin to think if a Nigerian could set up a business that is running. Because interestingly, we don't have a foreign in our, in, in our employment, on our payroll. And we try to tell them that if a Nigerian can get to this point, then they can be better. So we walk them through our factories, and we do career works with them, and we give them gifts to go back to their school. So sometimes we do what we need to do. I can remember when we were building our factories, we could not get fitters and welders. So we had to bring them in from abroad. And when we brought them in from abroad, we instructed that we employ 50 Nigerians to understudy those fitters for two years, and we're paying them while they were learning. And after we finished building our factory, we released them into the economy, because they needed to have a training that they would not have had in a formal setting. And they had it from the people who were paying on a daily basis to help them develop their skills so that they can go and help other Nigerians. Now, those ones are things that we do on our own just to help the society. And if, if, if I can go on and on because we do quite a lot of things that we don't probably document. But we do quite a bit to affect our society. At our 50th anniversary um, celebration, apart from the press conference and all that, that we did, we decided to appreciate our staff. We decided because we recognize that the biggest asset that we have. So what we did was we decided to have a party for them. We, and at the party, we decided to recognize anyone that has done more than 10 years with us. 
and we have about 57 of them. So we, we gave them plaques, of course, in the party setting, and we gave them gifts to go home, and we celebrated them. We had people that have done between 10 to 40 years. And what we did was the last four, we have only four that have done 35 years up to 40 years. And those four was the one we took them to the dinner party, and we celebrated them. And, and I think we just put it in the, um, what do you call it, the sentiment bank, or the emotional bank of the staff to, to, to show that we do appreciate them. Let's talk about the pharmaceutical industry in Nigeria. What do you think can be done better by governments, by the private sectors? I mean, how can you work, all work together? I remember talking about to a CEO about cornstarch, even getting cornstarch or working with local farmers to get the things, the little ingredients that can actually be used for manufacturing. So what's the, what's the real problem? The, you see, the, the pharmaceutical industry is a very unique industry. It's an industry that I don't think that we appreciate the pharmaceutical industry in Nigeria because we don't realize that health is wealth. The case of Ebola and the case of um, COVID-19 ought to have jettisoned in us as a nation that there's certain industries in this country that should be given special attention. In the case of Ebola, if you remember, we were not given any help by the outside world. It was just the grace of God that helped us to curtail Ebola in this Nigeria. And, and the, God bless the good doctor that contained it and paid a life, paid for it for a life. Now, having said that, the recent one that is COVID-19 that happened, you'll find that, that we were dependent mostly on foreign, on foreign assistance to help us for um, the test kits, to help us for little vitamins. We just did all we could do, producing sanitizers, producing um, vitamin Cs, and producing. But the, the truth is that if we do not have a vibrant pharmaceutical society or pharmaceutical setup in the country, we are dependent, we are at the risk of other countries shutting down. During the, pharmaceutical, during the COVID-19, some countries actually shut down supplies out of the country. What I think that we should do in the pharmaceutical industry, because you mentioned, you mentioned cornstarch. Cornstarch corn starch is very interesting because there are two grades of cornstarch. There's a the food grade and there's a the pharmaceutical grade. The food grade is available. It, it can be done because we have, we have a sister company that produces seasoning cube, and they use cornstarch that is the food grade, effortlessly. But you can use the food grade starch for the pharmaceutical starch. Um, starch. The pharmaceutical starch has to be a notch better because the, the starch you use, if you use it in the pharmaceutical composition, then you see that your paracetamol and your tablets goes dark. The problem might not maintain the, the color of the tablets. Now, we have not been able to get anybody that is in that cornstarch space to take it to the next level. And why? Why is this so? We are in the production of medicines. We're not in the production of excipients. We are going to work with them because, you see, they have to do a lot of research and development. They have to get the samples of what is outside. They might have to even go abroad to find out how they do it and what they do. But you see, because data are in manufacturing and they're grappling with all the factors that we grapple with, apart from them grappling with that, they're grappling with supply, supply chain problems. Because they have to, if it is cassava, if it is corn, they have to even be sure that they have enough resource for them to be able to convert. Now, can they meet the market? Can they meet the demand of the food industry? That's the question you have to ask. Now, do we have enough corn? Do we have enough starch for the industry, apart from the one we eat, to be able to meet? So it's actually a long chain. It's a back chain. The agricultural sector, is it well developed enough to be able to segment one for food, or one for the industries. So it's a, it's, that's why I said the country must be deliberate about where they want us to go or how they want the extension to be developed. The banks always look at us and say, oh, what's the GDP of, 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 of the pharmaceutical industry? The truth is if you continue to look at GDP and we shut down, then who takes care of the health of the nation? We'll be dependent on imports on another country to take care of the health of our nation. The transformation that the pharmaceutical industry has gone through in the last seven years 
or if I could even stretch it a bit, 10 years, has been phenomenal. The investment in the pharmaceutical industry has been second to none in the last 10 years. Industries, businesses, owners of businesses and industries are investing huge amount of money in bringing in machineries, contemporary machineries, and bringing in R&Ds. But to what avail if the government is not in support, if the government is not deliberate on how they want the industry to grow? What about the imports regime? There was a time we were paying 20% for imports and traders were paying 5% for imports. We had to go to the customs, we have to go to the Ministry of Health to say no, it is an aberration. Where finished goods are coming in at 5% and raw materials are coming in at 20%. And it took forever and we fight it every, every year. Most traders do not invest anything. They just bring the goods, have a warehouse and sell, or probably, probably advertisement. Now, if those ones, because they're more than us in number, are putting pressure on government to disregard us, we have machineries. We're truly invested in our factory. We're green. And to go green in Nigerian concept, in an industrial setting, it's a big deal because there's a lot of money. How do you manage to keep the standards with the various products you manufacture from health, um, pharmaceutical products to personal care? How do you manage to stay on top of your game? Um, interesting. That's a very good question. What we have done in Delinate is to build quality from the first step. Before we buy any raw material, the supplier, wherever you are in the world, must send us a sample. And we have to test the sample to approve the sample before you send it to us. On the receipt of the sample in our warehouse, we test. And when we test it before we store it, we have to store it in the agreed relative temperature suggested by the manufacturer, just to make sure that there is no variation in quality. At the point of manufacturing, we test again. Now, when we go through the concept of manufacturing or the, through the process of manufacturing, before we bottle or before we do packaging, we test again. And when we finish testing, at the, after packaging, when they are on the pallets, we now do zonal testing. It is until it passes the zonal testing at the end of production and packaging before it's been released. That is when it's in quarantine after going through the process of quarantine before it gets released to the market. So it goes through a thorough process. And we built, we have one of the best labs in the pharmaceutical industry. And our lab, we have over 50 staff working in the lab, just making sure that the quality is consistent. So that's what we do. We just, we just call it to focus. Because the truth is that that is all we have to offer. That is all the lenders to offer the market, quality products. If you use our brand, it compares to any quality brand anywhere in the world. That is what we pledge, and that is what we deliver. As an indigenous company, fully Nigerian, you're not a PLC. I mean, a lot of people will find or ask the question how you have even been able to survive 50 years. Interesting. Um, yes, we're unique, and, and that is a special grace. Um, it's a privately owned company. It's, it's a family business and they started by our founder and the chairman, um, Otumba Dr. I'm Oin um, OFR JP. He, he started manufacturing in 1972. The business is actually older than 50 years, but we started manufacturing in 1972. So this year makes it 50 years of manufacturing. Now, what has made us unique thus far is it has been dovetailed to the second generation that is running the business. I've been around here now for 27 years. So, and the chairman is there as just a guide. And what we have done is to, because it's a generational business, that is what it has dovetailed to now. So is to train the next generation to be able to take over the business from us. But for them to do that, we ought to be able to set out, to set up standards, to set up structures, to make sure that the standard and the structures do not need to be recreated but improved on. And one of our vision is to be an, a local business, operate like a world-class business. 
And that's, that's written all over what we do, just to make sure that as a family business, as a privately owned business, fully Nigerian, wholly Nigerian, we are able to deliver from generation to generation. 50 years gone already, and I'm sure you're hoping for another 50 and another 50. Where do you hope to see this organization in the coming years? Daily Need. I see Daily Need being one of the best that Nigeria has to offer. I see Daily Need in the first three pharmaceutical companies in this country. A um, few years ago, I told my staff that we're going to be one of the first five, and they didn't believe. But now I think we're comfortably in one of the first five they're about, when we're talking about structures, building brick structures. But I see us to be one of the best, if not the best, very soon, not even in 50 years. Um, the whole idea is for us, the dream is for us to have a robust research and development session that is going to go into looking at ailments that are specific to either Nigeria or Africa. We're thinking seriously of going into vaccines. We're thinking seriously of going to where others do not go to. But it's a journey of a thousand years. It must start one day. And the focus is to take a step at a time. The focus is to be organic in our growth, to be sustainable, because we're built to last. And that is what we have been doing in the last 50 years, to build structures that are solid, to build brands that to see you through the good and the bad times, to build a system that is trustworthy, a system that will not crack under the severest, most severe structures. And that is what we're trying to build. So I see the next 50 years as an interesting time to come. And that's what we're looking forward to. As we wish the group happy 50th anniversary, we also ask more organizations to continue to do more to add value to society. Well, on that note, we end Kaleidoscope for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, go to youtube.com forward slash channels web, click on playlist, then scroll to Kaleidoscope and you can watch as many editions and past editions as possible. I'll see you again very soon. Stay safe. I'm Anne Mwawudu. Thanks for watching.